Desert region. What? Okay, whatever. Okay, so does this uh, work, or should I just full screen one of these things? Um, I see. Yeah, that web you can have browser on the le top left, right? But then um, right. everything else is like boxes. Right. Yeah, it's all kind of blacked out. Yeah, I guess. Um, I guess I could just put these away, put them in screen two. Uh, okay. Yeah, that, that looks more normal. Okay, so I'll just do this. Um, let me know if there are chat questions, and I'll try to answer them. But I don't have them up right now. All right, so um, I'm going to talk about my spaghetti stuff. So spaghetti is a thing for like doing a bunch of package set stuff. So you know, in PSC package normally you deal with this huge JSON file and you have to edit it and whatever. So I said like, okay, a lot of people complain about that. I think it's also like quite hard to edit the JSON file. So I might as well work with something that's like uh, typed in some way. So that's why I came up with this spaghetti thing where I had some idea of doing it in um, like JSON files before that I would merge together. But then since uh, I got to find out about doll, I decided just to use doll in order to do it. So yeah, the the um, what is it? the slogan is like ma ho comprato una scatola di script, which is like I brought a box of fear script. And uh, when it says like he non ha paura di ribocasi de le maniche or whatever, it's saying like for those who actually want to roll their sleeves up and maybe like also like prepare some spirity. So um uh let's get into just like why how I guess. Um like I have like a intro here that just summarizes what he just said. It's like nobody really wants to do with all this JSON stuff. Um but yeah. So what do I use doll, right? Doll is this program language and people talk about whatever. It's like uh guarantees termination and whatever. But really the only things I really care about are Doll has a static typing and it has correct inference. So I can say that like something should be of type package and it'll actually infer the fields and figure things out. I can do some simple functions so that you'll see that I, I have a function for defining packages. Uh, it has a local and remote path importing, right? So mostly I use this local importing in order to prepare a doll expression, like a record that can be generated to JSON. But you'll see that like sometimes the remote stuff can actually be like quite useful. And then just type records with the direct merging. So you can actually have differently typed records, but you can merge them together into one big record. And you can, uh, the way I use this as I, I often use right-sided merging where I have a base set of things that are coming in and being merged together. And I also have some patches or overrides that I might add on top later. So by differently typed records, you mean that like record A and record B. Record A has uh, fields A, B, C. That record, the other record, record B has like just A and B. And then you can merge these two in, in, and create a record of A, B, and C. Yeah. And then if you use right-sided merge, which I usually do, you can take the A, B, and, A and B from the right one and override existing values for those. So patching a uh, package set now becomes just a matter of like applying another record type to merge in. Okay. So like as part of this merge process, the A and B keys can change. Like you can choose to use the type of A and B in the right hand side or in the left hand side. Uh, if you use right-sided merge, then it will overwrite what the type of the left side is. But personally, I don't use that very much. But yeah, I guess uh, in some, well, yeah, it, it. I don't really use that. But for example, you could overwrite like one with a string or something. Does PureScript have a function like this? You can like... Right-sided merge? Kind of, you can implement one, but we're now right now we have like a left-sided merge. But but yeah. Okay. Um. So the files in this spaghetti package are that I have a package that doll, so it's like a type definition. I have a make package, which is a function for defining 
uh, packages. And I have our packages, which is like actually all the packages that I'm actually going to be working with. Then like, that's where I do a lot of the merging. And I have this concept of groups where it's actually GitHub organizations, but I just came up with groups. And it's where I store a bunch of like uh, subsets of the entire package set so that they can be merged together. So first, like package the doll. Um, doll has a really simple type system. So like, don't expect too much unless you want to like, do everything manually. So in my case, I represent this very simply as dependencies or a list of text. So the text is going to be like whatever tags, whatever um, labels of the rec record in the end, the labels of the package set. Repo is going to be text, so it's a like git URL or whatever the hell. Version is going to be the branch or tag name, like v3 or like compiler 012. And that's actually it. Like this, this type is actually what makes up like most of this spaghetti, uh, the spaghetti package set. So when we have the, this uh, make package function, then this function just provides me a way to like not have to type out everything again, but also gives me a way for me to just say, okay, I'll just define dependencies first, then repo, and then version, and then I get get out this uh, record, at, which is going to be a type package at doll. So here you can see I do this uh, local import, right? And this local import works because uh, basically because doll parses this as a uh, file path, a relative file path, it'll actually go look for this package.doll file and use it. And in this context, it's a type, so it makes sure that like I actually define the type definition here and it uses that. So um, yeah, this function is like extremely type, right? But really we can still like use it to conveniently define packages. And then later on, I'll, I'll show you how I do validation, some quick validation of these uh, package sets. And yeah, this package of the doll is the main thing that I was talking about. So whenever I have this um, uh, records of uh, this package type, then I can use this uh, packages.doll file to, to actually register which ones I actually want to use and I can merge them in over here. And so like in my cases, I use this start with a peer script organization and add in the different peer script organizations. And at the very end, I have my packages that I've made from my user and then some patches or overrides that I need to, need to do. So the way that this works is that, yeah, packages.doll is last. So say if I'm working on string parsers and the version and peer script contrib is broken in some way, then I can define the string parser in here by, well, first I import in the function make package. And I use that make package function in here with the record that says, it's a record of the string parsers with make package of these dependencies at this repo, so at my user, and then at the branch no code points. And then this, this when it's used, will override how the uh, package set is generated. So if we look at this um, code example real fast, well, we could say, um, let's run make, and then I'll uh, generate the doll files and uh, create it. And then if we look at packages at JSON, it's like uh, your typical doll, uh, doll file, right? Or your typical uh, packages, package set. And so if we look over here, string parsers, like I'm pretty sure I'm just using the normal version right now. Yeah, so it pulled it from path through to one, uh, which is like a GitHub redirect URL. But I could go over back to um, packages that doll, right? And I could say, um, yeah, let's just uh, merge another thing in over here. And let's say, um, uh, yeah, this could be like, uh, what's the actual type again? Yeah, dependencies, we could just say it, it's uh, empty. And we could say repo, it's like blah, blah, blah. And then version could be, um, could be like one, two, three, right? And we could just uh, put this in. Am I missing anything? Instead of a colon? Yeah. Oops, I've got a string parsers. What did it say? 
um, the version. Do you need an equals after that instead of a colon? Just to set that. Oh, yeah. Oops. Thanks. Okay, yeah. and this should work, right? So let's run make invalid input. Hmm, did I get this totally wrong? <laughs> oh no, I've forgotten how to write doll. What is this? It's equal, 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 right? What am I, what am I missing, missing here? Right merge this record. Yeah, it should work. Um, hmm. I wonder if there's like some kind of rules about uh, where white space should be normally. I have picked a comma. Apparently, I'm not. I'm not so good at doll. Apparently, like I don't quite understand why this doesn't work. Can you open up like the Justin Wu doll file and copy from there as a template? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I have a bunch of stuff in here. But like here, I'm using this make package uh, function, right? So I, I could just like copy oh, that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so let's go back to package.doll. Yeah, might as well. And we can do a uh, right sided merge of this and string parsers equals make package of um so this is redefining the string parsers package that's provided by one of the um records on the left exactly uh, of yeah right? so so you can like choose to use your fork of it instead of somebody else you can just change one property in that package definition yeah Okay, so let's let's hope this works. Oh my god. Wait. It's complaining about missing make package doll. What? Um Well the error message is not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there we go. Well, what did I miss it before? Because this doesn't look any different from what I had. Other than the What's the implementation this. of make, pa make package? Yeah, I use this make package uh, function this time, which is... Can we look at the implementation of that? Yeah, make package. And it just takes yeah. in those arguments and it does equal whatever. Right? It's the same thing that I had. Oh, yeah. It looks like it's the same thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So this is the thing, right? Like, you can, like, almost no, no doll and you can get to work, so... I demonstrated that you don't have to know doll to use doll. <laughs> Let's go look at this. So if we go look at string parsers now, we'll see that it's a giant mess where it says repo ADS and a version blah, blah, blah. Is, is it possible to um, modify just the repo? Not, not, not the version tag or anything else, but just the repo of mm. packages defined pr previously in the chain? Mm, I don't um, think so. Because that's something that I've always wanted, I've often wanted to do when I was playing with Nix, is like, well, I like this Vim package, but I just want to like change the version so that it's like some newer version than what's in the community Nix definition for this package. So like, um, for a long time, Nix didn't have some standard function for um, doing, this updating one property in a package. So I had to like copy and paste the whole package definition and just change one property of it. So it'd be kind of nice if you could do something like that in doll. I'm sure you can. Well, I mean, we can try it out real fast. I mean, there's not really that much for me to present. So let's, let's go look yeah. at it. Um, package is a doll, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so when I save this, why isn't it formatting? Well, whatever. Okay, so we're we're wanting to not do this part, right? We're wanting to just uh, do one thing. So let's say one. Let's uh, set equal this, right? And um, so oh, first, yeah, let's just say in set, and then we can say um, oh, what do we say? Uh, and let um. um 
updated uh, string parsers. Right. Got to be uh, for now. I'm just going to put this in here like this, and then say, um, let's see. And then set can be right merged with an updated string parsers. Like this, right? And then this will have to be uh, just um ah oh, man. How does this how does this work? I think it's just set and then with the string string parsers uh right merged with uh set or you said repo actually, right? Yeah, it'd be the repo, and it might also have to be the um, version. But like, it'd be nice to not touch the dependencies property. Yeah. Because if, if you make your own, if you make your fork of it, you're gonna make a few patches, and then maybe you know slice a version, a new version off, like some custom one. Or you maybe could do a branch too. But yeah, anyways, you might as well do the version also. Hmm. <laughs> How do I do this? Maybe maybe this will work. Oh, maybe. Okay, let's let's see if that works. Make. Okay, format files and we'll do whatever. Okay. Let's go down to string parsers. Yeah, what do you know? It says repo my repo and version hello. So yeah, this thing actually did work. Hmm. I'm quite surprised. So yeah, like just a review. I set the set to a variable and I created another let binding that said updated string parsers where I took the string parse out of the set and update and uh, right merged it with uh, some updated fields. And I took the original set and then right merged it with my updated string parsers. So, you know, there's no updated, uh, there's no real good um, update records in text or whatever. There's no like nest records updates to text or whatever the hell. But you can at least just write merge in whatever modifications you want. So yeah, I guess this works. Yeah. I never actually thought about doing this. Yeah, that's that's pretty nice. That's really nice. I mean this is so much nicer than the Nix. Yeah like yeah the one thing I've the, the, my, my one problem with Nix is the language is kind of Loosely typed or untyped or yeah. whatever. So it's and like there's no uh, in inline uh, or right next to it. There's no type signatures. So I always have to like men do mental gymnastics to figure out what the type of one of these records. Yeah. Are. But yeah, it's pretty nice. And hey, I mean, it always could be worse. We could be editing package.json directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it might be worth mentioning that like the purpose of all this is to output one big packages.json, and then what do you do with this? Because this is a Spaghetti project, right? And you put this output packages.json, you put that, and you you commit that to Spaghetti. Yeah, I actually commit the file because um, PS package expects only for a repo to contain this file, right? So I actually commit this file because like. Well, I'm not gonna like just generate it every single time. So I just generate it once and I have it here. In all reality, I could probably have a separate process that pushes a tag and only pushes this file to it and whatever. But sometimes I've actually gone through and just like looked at what what um what the contents of uh, some packet set that I had was. So yeah, for now I just push this um, package.json here. Is it worth, uh, rather than maintaining this big JSON blob, um, instead maintaining just the doll expressions? And um, then in PSC package, you just point it at some doll expression that you want to use, and then it will go and fetch and do this compilation. Yeah, I mean, we would have to build in doll to PSC PS package, though. And I like that PSC right. package is like just really stupid. Like it's just a glorified bash script, right? PSD package. So I wouldn't want to build doll support into it unless like enough people started saying that they only want to use doll. And even then, I don't think doll will ever be that popular, but yeah, we can mm -hmm. see. But but yeah, um so uh that that this demonstration basically just already tells us like how the definition of overrides go. And the last thing I guess about the doll thing, 
specifically is uh, we can do this um, project local setup, right? So the project local setup is um, that, okay, so first off, I made this thing because I wanted to like sometimes be able to just uh, patch the package set um, within a certain project. And, you know, in PSC package, there's something like extra depths or whatever. And well, personally, I don't even like the extra depths anyways. So like, instead of trying to hack something into PSC package, since PSC package just only works with the package that JSON file, really that all, all you need for local uh, overrides is to actually generate the Excel, uh, generate a package that JSON file in your project, right? So this is a setup where, um, you take your packages that JSON uh, packages a doll, and you actually have it in your project, right? And you actually just use a remote imports in doll to do this. So you can say let my make package, and you can actually use a git URL to fetch this. And if you're security constants, you could also um, add a uh, add a SHA to this import remote import if you want. But then we can just import this, right? And we can have some other overrides just defined here in line. And then we can take this packages that's in a remote source and I just right merge onto it. And it, it, that's actually like basically it, right? Like after you have this, you just create a dummy PSC package JSON file. This is this, okay, I'm gonna use local set from no source or whatever. And then you can have like a bash script like install that just says, okay, we're gonna write it lo local and we're gonna do PSC package name with so local dot set package of JSON. And then once you've written this file, then PSC package will read from this file to do everything. So you just run dot JSON and then feed it this file or feed its expression for remote importing that file. And then you just write it out and it works. So instead of like, you know, hacking whatever into PSC package or doing a bunch of, whole bunch of uh, manual file or file handling for how fork projects should be handled in PSC package um, set file directory. You can just like do this once and then like everything else just runs. I've used this like uh, once at work and then I, I've used it to test some like compiler forks. Uh, so I have like a compiler fork that uh, does this stuff to check them um, check some stuff that I was working on with single board break on. But yeah, this is basically it for like how you can make a local package set using information from an upstream source. So uh, that, that in, install, that, uh, that, that didn't touch the um, local directories because you, you, you just want a subset of the that packages.json, right, in your in your local project, right? You want to install a few packages from that. No, I mean, in, in the, um, the package of J doll, this thing actually takes an entire package set just to find here, right? So it's like mm -hmm. uh, 1906.18, it just takes Okay, so your PSC package.json, that'll still be in a JSON format. Like you want this, you want to find this file in the doll language and generate it from doll. Yeah, no, I mean, this one is just the project PSC package JSON file mm -hmm. that you normally have. So in this PSC package that JSON file, all these dependencies of your, that local directory's project, all the, all the, all those dependencies like console effect prelude. If I want to find the definitions of those, I wouldn't look in another JSON file. I would look in that doll file, right? Yeah, I guess. Or you would look in this doll file. Yes. Right. You would look at this remote source for what the, what the original doll was. And then you would go look in the target file generated here. If you wanted to look at the actual JSON output. Okay. Okay. So you, you, okay. You look in the, you, so you, you would look from the PSC package of JSON. If I want to find that, I would look in the JSON file itself to see what it ultimately resolved to. And then if I wanted to find out why it resolved to that, I would have to trace back through all of the different um, package, like the, those, those um, record merges, right? I have to trace back through all the record merges to find 
um, where it was defined and where it, and where it was overridden. Yeah, but in in all reality, in the end, like how you look for where a package was defined is uh, like if I wanted to look for where effect is defined here, I would just go rg, um, well ignore case and whatever. But I could also just do this, right? Console, and I see that console comes up in a lot of places, right? <laughs> So I could mm -hmm. I could just do this also. Uh, all right, and now I see that it's in pure script doll forty line forty two. Okay. So like um all these record merges, it kind of reminds me of like CSS cascading style sheets where you you look you look and see, oh this value, like X is um this value here. But then, like in the end product, you, you see it's not that value. So you have to go and trace through all the different places where X has been overridden. And so I, I like I don't know. I, it th this could be a problem, but um, in in reality, like it probably wouldn't be a, such such a, such a big problem. Yeah, I mean, like in the browser, you have the ability to inspect the style and inspect the source that it came from when you like click on the uh, source location. So it's like the same. Mm -hmm. Well, like. What I mean is uh, this thing, right? You inspect on something, and then you can look at like what style she was defining and where and how, right? Mm -hmm. So in a similar way, like this RG, like using rip grab to look for where this is defined, it's it's like it's like the same thing, yeah. So if I wanted to look up like right now, like where we did the um, modification of string parsers, then I would just do this, right? And then we can see, okay, string parts are defined in these two locations. So it is like somewhat manual to look for the, where the overrides came from. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then um, knowing which one is the um, latest one is fine. Just look in the record merges and see which one is latest in the chain. I think that's yeah, that's a great that's a great way of looking at it. Yeah, I think it's like giving enough. But yeah, other than this, uh, the spaghetti doesn't really have anything special, right? So this is basically it for spaghetti. Um, of course, there are some like fun things in here. So I've written about them in the docs also, where um, I've written about the uh, um, how to use this thing. So uh, yeah, one thing that I should talk about, I guess, is the make file. So the make file has like a bunch of targets to find and like, you know, format will format the doll files and then like uh, generate will generate the packages.json file using the doll thing and whatnot. And then val there's a script validate that will validate that uh, my package set at least makes enough sense. So and it's a Perl file because I think Perl is probably, is pretty cool. So if we do make validate, then it'll go through and validate the dependencies. And we look at this um, folder of the scripts. And there's a couple scripts in here, like add from Valor, prepare Valor, whatever, whatever. So the way I use these is like scripts uh, add from Valor. And I might say like, uh, let's see, there's like pure script. Um, what was it? Mm, let's see, there's like um, type is equal, and then this will use Bower to download the files and then like put it in. And then we'll see, you'll see that like it's actually added it in here. And when we run make, then it'll generate the files. And then in the end, we have the result that this has actually been written into our package.json file. So, yeah, I actually use uh, these scripts that are inside and yeah they they work <laughs> I don't know like if you look at validate it's um, pretty simple like all it does is it takes the keys out of the package of JSON so you know those are the packages and then there's a sub validate routine that looks at um, these and says okay is this already validated if it isn't then we can go on and Add uh, that we have validated this, and then otherwise, like it's like whatever, and then you can do for each like the 
for each uh, dependency, you can go look at it, the, its dependencies and then just check that like they all exist in the package, um, in the packages. And yeah, other than, so uh, what is it? Overall, this repo is uh, GitHub doesn't know how to count doll files. So GitHub thinks that this is a 88% Perl, 7% make, and 3.9% mix. So, you know, in reality, there's, uh, what is it? Um, do I have LOC, CLOC, maybe? What is, the, what is the lines of code thing called? The Rust program. Mm, LOC. Let's let's try this. Toke program that counts counts lines of code. Why would you call this toke when it's like toke? It would be a clock. This is like total misnomer. Yeah, it's funny to hear you hear, hear you that you, you say that one. <laughs> hey, come on! All my libraries are named pretty well, you know. And right in the repo, they say exactly why they're named so much. Yeah, I'm like yeah, I can see that reason. Man. You know, like Tong Lulu, right? Have you eaten Tong Lulu? <laughs> These, right? No. It's like uh, fruits on a stick. And it's because uh, these dots are like each individual fruit, <laughs> you know? So you put all these fruits together in a stick. It's a tongue hulu. I didn't see what you named this project. That's a good name. <laughs> Most of my libraries have pretty good names like this. Most of them. <laughs> but yeah, oh my God, there we go. Yeah, so. Oh my God, LOC, why don't you know how to do this? Uh, maybe I should just do um, word count on source, right? The word count says there's 1482 lines of uh, word lines of doll, so LOC will tell me that the JSON generator has 1839 lines of uh, code in there. Supposedly, oh wait, that's because I have a package of, PS package of JSON. If you look at this, then we'll see 1839 lines of JSON. Hmm. So it actually was right. So are you a professional Perl uh, programmer now? <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Um, I mean, I will say that like it's not like super maintainable, but it's better than writing Bash. So you know, that's all it has to be. Like you know, like how would I implement um, this uh, visited right? Uh, Ash from Bower or no validate? Like this validate thing. How would you write this in Perl, where you like actually look up like if something has already been validated? In, in in Bash, how would you do this? I don't know a way to do this. Hmm. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. 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 Um. The, the, but yeah, this that's about it. Um. I wrote a lot of docs on this, so I I spent like a couple hours writing these docs. So. Hopefully, if anyone's interested in using a doll with um, Spaghetti or like with packages in general, then they'll just go through my doc, docs sometime. And also, like if you want to just learn what, what PSC package is, like in like a really short form, and just like get the rundown of like how it works and like what you need to know about it to like really be able to solve any problems you have, like. They should definitely look at my three docs and like read the intro section. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, doll, doll is a pretty cool uh, language. Um, well, I guess I guess the language is pretty simple, but you know, 
if limit limitations are what make it interesting. And it's really good for making, uh, for generating these JSON files or YAML files. So yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a great fit for this PSC package project. This is actually uh, it for this. So um, otherwise, I don't really have anything else to really talk about. Does anyone else want to talk about something? Um, I don't. I don't know if anybody else does. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Recently, we've been fixing some of the problems at the um, pure strip uh, uh, repository. So now it like builds like fairly well and everything. Uh, there's been some problems though with um, with uh, GitHub failing to work with um, Bower installs. Some of the GitHub clone requests have been failing. So some of the jobs have been failing because of that. But at least now, like the the project setup here it like works pretty well, so like um, hopefully we can merge my change to add boolean to the types to prim, and then um, once we once we do that, then we can have like breaking on symbols where we can say like if a symbol contains comma, then we can break on a and b. Like I have a repo that shows this where like like I was talking about the I had this local. Uh, set up here. So this package is JSON at this type of prelude override, override over here. And then I had the doll install file to install everything. So yeah, like I think this would be quite useful where you don't have to do like so much of the symbol cons stuff when you have, when you can just do this uh, symbol contains. So yeah. You said you said that this uh, symbol contains would be useful in some of this doll project work. PSC package. No, it's just uh, whenever you do symbol cons in general, it's like quite useful there. Oh, so okay. if you uh, if you want to split a string, if you want to like say um, split a symbol by a colon, like if you, you want to look for if the colon is there, and if it is there, you want to split on it. Like right now, I do like a this really silly accumulation. Um, let's see. I forget what I named my library. <laughs> um, Parse string into type level. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's this. I forget. Maybe I have to go to my blog post. Yeah, parsing to extract types. Where did I do this? Did I do this in Kusiak? Yeah, I did this. Okay. Yeah. All right. For your so, mouth. like the um, like if I have like name string h int, I want to be able to split on this uh, colon, right? I want to be able to test if that colon is there and split on it. And right now, I haven't really been able to do that. So the way it works right now is that there's this really kind of not so good method of uh, I parse a parameter by um, keeping track of this accumulate, right? And I just say, okay, if, if um, like in the base case, like I'm just gonna keep on iterating through each individual character and then building up an accumulate of each character and then doing a split based on the colon. And so like, you know, it can optionally not have this type of annotation. So I can't just like do some kind of like um, naive um, split just like without checking that exists. And there's really no way to do this split right now. So at least uh, adding this um, kind Boolean thing would be a first step to then uh, hopefully add this, um, add my um, PR for doing break on symbol and find that uh, symbol contains something. And then, yeah, those, it'll be like really useful.
It'll also be useful to do this um, for uh, checking if a row type carries a field. So I wrote an implementation just real fast just to demonstrate how this works. Where I'm, like you can write this manually where you do, uh, oh my God, this is not the right one, row contains. I did this thing where I said um, you could check check if a row contains a label and they get the result as a Boolean. And if you write this manually, you can do this, but the overall cost of the instance dictionaries is like pretty high when you consider the first time boot up uh, boot up uh, evaluation of those empty dictionaries. So even though you can do this like in a in pure script where you just do row list on the row and then you look through and see if like if you have a match, then you say that it's tr empty exit with true. If you don't have a match, then you do uh, you take the tail and try to find out if it's going to ever match. And if it doesn't match ever, then it's a false. Instead of like doing all this manually, if we can just do it at the compiler, it can be done much faster, and it can be we can like prevent ourselves from having to pay the runtime cost. So, yeah, I don't know. Just more things that could be in like 0 0.12.1 or something. That'll be like really big quality of life improvements for for me at least for doing like some basic type of programming. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, yeah, I'm like I'm one of those weirdos where I do I do a lot of type of programming, just like stuff that looks like uh, that looks like judgment, right? Where I do like uh, SQL parameters that are typed, where I extract it out to a record type, and then I also have the thing where I do the um, the routes at the type level, right? In my VidTracker project, so VidTracker, like if you look at main over here, you'll see that I have uh, register routes and I have API routes here, and then record routes, and it works by doing a bunch of type level stuff to figure out like what handlers exist and if they're registered and they are there, then I use the register handler implementation to extra register handlers. So I have a bunch of like type level, level code and it's like, well, it's not actually a bunch because it's only a couple hundred lines. So just even having like small things like this would be like a huge improvement for me. Especially because uh, I don't use types. Uh, I don't. I don't use lens in my code base, right? I don't use lens. I don't use recursion schemes. I don't use free even, and I don't use like. I don't even use NTL in my work projects. So you know, it's like my work project is simple pure script plus type all. As weird as it sounds. Yeah. Did I see that uh, PSC package has a a node package now? So you can install it using Node. Oh yeah. And yeah. The, the name of that Node um, package does it have simple in it? Yeah, PSA package bin simple. <laughs> uh, we we also updated the um, PSA package docs now. So the PSA package docs, if you go here, That's then nice. there's yeah, installation. I just like uh, do like a curl from the GitHub uh, releases thing. Get the I mean, package. if you ask me, I think that's actually the best if you curl it. Mm -hmm. If you do this, if you basically do this, I think this is still the best way to install uh, to install PS package. But yeah, we do have this PS package um, bin. In the bin here. Yeah, I have like a, a depth uh, install depths bash script or similar to that, and I just have have that as one of the scripts in my project so it's like oh you don't have this this in this step just run this script file and you'll get them all <laughs> but uh yeah there's still the chocolatey that uh the package chocolatey that um i wonder how you deal with basil this guy made uh oh nice so, yeah there there is this i think it's really only used that um uh where was it? Um, I think like S S and P or something. They were using it for some reason. So yeah, there's like a few downloads, but yeah, there's at least that. Yeah. 
And yeah, um, also I've been writing a whole bunch of stuff on this uh, PureScript resources. So yeah, if you want to like find out stuff about that, yeah, it's it's like in many ways it's like uh, it's it's like not like super. It's it's kind of spicy, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I, at least I actually tried to put like this very shortly like what people should try looking at in here. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so I have a whole bunch of stuff written here. So you know, kind of like the usual stuff, like oh man, how why did Pearson go from F to effect? Yeah, is that's a question. Is dead? It's like, how do I upgrade to 0 0.12? It's like, well, okay, yeah, sure, but there's just like these things, so once you do this, it should be good. And that kind of stuff. It's like, I've been writing up homes that kind of stuff here. Yeah, I've slowly been working on some uh, documentation too, but I'm super slow. <laughs> you, I think your style is a lot faster than mine. Well, I mean, this is like chaotic style, I guess. It's like I try to contribute to some of this stuff, but then um, in the end, it's like so much faster for me to just put everything on my own pages. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. You get like choose, this you is just my region standards and contents and uh, uh, writing style and such. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Like... You know, that that's actually something I have a little bit of a problem with where a lot of people have like really high standards for doing things, but in reality, the only standard I have is I just want people to write better than Wikipedia does, which is actually just like, just, just use like simple sentences, so verb object uh, agreement doesn't really matter. Just Just any kind of style is fine for me, but just having information out there is like, the most important thing. Yeah, I can I can agree with that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if if anyone's watching this recording, like if they they should try looking at these pages if they're interested. But um, yeah, I I've, I've been like random stuff written in here about like how to use Travis CI, you no, know, and how to do like um. Have you thought about uh, how to link to this from, I don't know, the PureScript slash documentation project? Oh, what do you mean? So like uh, like the PureScript slash documentation project, it, it has a very strict, you know, about what goes in there. Um, it's like PureScript documentation is only for documentation of the PureScript project itself. It's not for how to how to use its libraries or... Uh, ex or explanation of this or that or this or that like it's like this project is very s limited scope um, from my understanding so yeah. like it, like it, it might be nice to link to other documentation collections from within this project so if, if that if that if that's true if, if the maintainers of the documentation project believe that true then maybe they could link to your PureScript resources project also or, yeah maybe I don't know, but yeah, I just say that because this seems like a good, uh, good resource. This PureScript resources project, but um, I just worry that it's like not the official one, so people might be skeptical, and it might be a little bit difficult to find. So yeah, definitely hard to find. Uh, I mean, I just link this to people who ask me personally, and they want to hear what I think about things. Right? This is just is all biased information here, but. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe like if I wouldn't mind if anyone used excerpts from this thing and just said, okay, it comes from this link. Right? Like any kind of attribution is fine for me. It's just like, uh, you know, like this was copy pasted from this. <laughs> that, would be, that would be like totally fine for me. Oh, that's fine? Okay, cool. Yeah, I was thinking about bar bar borrowing um, some of your explanations here but yeah cool i'll do that i'll do that yeah i mean if it ends up being like use, useful anywhere then feel free mm -hmm. i don't know if it'll be so useful but yeah <laughs> well it's a good a good base maybe yeah
Well, I think, I think, I think, I think that's all the uh, content we got for today. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Justin, for showing that stuff. I've been pretty curious to get a better look at the, uh, your thoughts behind that doll project. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been pretty, pretty good to use doll. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I haven't run into any, like, real problems with it. And, like, I showed them my validation thing, my validation script. is like, sometimes with the doll stuff, it's, like, it doesn't quite give you enough tools to do stuff in it in the type system, but at least it like just generating whatever you need with like the rough checks and then writing a small script to do a bunch of checks with JQ. It's like, it's quite simple enough. So I, I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's like a kind of a side project I've been wanting to do with uh, Doll too. So maybe I'll come talk about Doll in the next uh, se several months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that's yeah. I think that's all I got. So um, maybe we should uh, hop hop off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the chat room says thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, later, John.